welcome to Femi's Designs YouTube channel. So today we are going to be learning how to make a fluffy coconut cake. I already, earlier on, I already posted the 4G variant of this kind of coconut cake in my membership platform. So I just thought to bring this to the general class. This is going to be fluffy, more like a vanilla textured cake, but it's actually flavorful of coconut infused with coconut cream, mm, milk, as well as some coconut shavings and as well the coconut flavor so let's go right into this but the first thing we need to be doing in this class today is for us to whip up the egg whites because this recipe calls for four eggs but we're going to be i already divided the yolks apart from the egg white so this contains four yolks egg yolks and this contains four egg white not differently but single eggs so what i'm going to be doing now you use a wire whisk with your bone and you can as well use your hand mixer as the case may be too so to gather more you know to be able to do it better but for today i'm going to be using my stand alone because that's what i have available now so i'll just simply pour the whites into the bowl and whip up till it's actually stiff so i'll scrape that out and then keep aside for the ending part of the mixing of the butter because you need to aerate this recipe better since it can't contain heavy cream and that's because it's a water based recipe my previous um, coconut cake is an oil based recipe it's a bit more dense more like a coconut pound cake but this is a butter based recipe and it uses unsalted butter as seen here that's what we're going to be using and then because it's a butter based recipe it cannot contain heavy cream to lighten it and make it more creamy so in the absence of using heavy cream you'd use your stiff whipped egg white okay so that area is just as fine all right so let's go right into it now so this is contained with four egg whites so i'll take this in now and whip it up unfortunately i won't be able to say much until it's done because the noise is actually going to get into whatever i'm saying Exactly what it looks like see how stiff it is see it's supposed to be so see so this is going to be poured into a separate bowl and set, set aside like this see? please guys whenever you are working with egg rice yolks or anything basically to bake make sure you use room temperature eggs they give you better results all right and they don't alter the results in any possible way like if you have to use any egg that's not room temperature you might not even get the desired stiff pick you're looking for because of the temperature limit so that said i wouldn't necessarily need to maybe wash this because after all the egg is still going in so i'm just going to go right into the business now i will set this aside this is the flour so I think the first thing I'm going to be doing as always is to read out the measurements so that you can follow through carefully. So for this recipe, I'm going to be needing 250 grams of butter, unsalted butter. Probably I should just do it as I'm talking. Okay, so this is it. Okay, so I'll return this back into the map of zero. I hope it is actually showing on the other side. So yeah, I'm putting this to zero. Okay, so this is zero, right? So I need 250 grams of unsalted butter. Ambassador is the brand I use, but you can actually use any other brand as long as it's actually a very good brand. So 250 goes in. Unsalted butter because you can, it, it gives you a creamier result, and then you are able to control the quantity of salt that goes into it. As against if you were using the salted variant yeah but if you have to use the salted butter like this please omit the salt in the recipe now this is 256 it's supposed to stop at 250 so see yeah so 250 grams of salted butter that's the first ingredient the next will go in as well 200 grams of granulated white sugar um, 
the I put it back on the mark of zero so that I can now start again. So see zero. So 200 grams goes in. But you have to be careful when working like this because you don't want to be too fast and then pour too much and then it will be difficult for you to extract the sugar. That's why I see I'm doing it carefully. 200 grams. Almost there. Yeah. Perfect. So after doing that, I will then go ahead to put this up in the standalone mixer. Add the paddle attachment, this one, which is the flat beater. And then I'll let it just beat for about two to three minutes. Note that for you to use this kind of butter, it actually creams a lot faster than any other kind of butter, so you don't need to overly cream it. So I'll do this for just about two to three minutes and then we'll have the consistency we are looking for. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. This is what it looks like after beating together. It's just grainy, it's actually not extremely fluffy, but it's just grainy and just fine. So before I go ahead, let me just read through the remaining part of the recipe. Let me start from the scratch. I said 250 grams of unsalted butter, 200 grams of granulated sugar, four large eggs, that is four large egg whites and four large, you know, egg yolks, all from one egg, like together, right? Basically four large eggs divided in the white and the yolk. So one cup of evaporated milk, as seen here, one over four cup of coconut milk. Any good brand is fine. But this is a brand and this is a legacy, but any good brand is fine. Okay, the canned one, not the homemade one. The homemade variants will actually tend to make your cake a bit heavy because you need to prepare it with some water. And this doesn't contain any bit of water. So it's best to actually buy this off the shelf and use up. So next up is 350 grams of all-purpose flour plus a dash of either nutmeg or cinnamon, whichever one you prefer. Either cinnamon here or nutmeg, all right? But for this one, I actually added nutmeg, so you just a dash of nutmeg. Both of them actually just contribute to the flavor, so you can pick either one, but please don't use both, so you don't have an overwhelming flavor that would actually override the coconut flavor we're trying to achieve, right? So, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of baking powder, this doesn't use baking soda, of course, it's a butter-based recipe, so I've said that oftentimes, it already has its own level of strength, you don't need any more strength now, which is what the baking soda would have done. So, um, I said one tablespoon of baking powder, I said half, half tablespoon, sorry, half tablespoon of vanilla flavor, one tablespoon of coconut flavor, the coconut flavor is more than the vanilla flavor, then one cup of sweetened coconut flakes. This can actually be bought of stores. I'm not talking about the toasted ones that are sold around. And that's because that's actually a bit heavy. It has the tendency of sinking into the bottom part of your pan. But should in case that is actually what you can have access to, the only thing I would advise you is to actually coat it like a little bit with some remnant from the bit of flour that you use. Don't take any new one. Take it from the bit of flour that you have here and coat it so that you can actually like pack it around so that it doesn't sink. It will still sink, but it wouldn't be as much. But this actually is the regular one. This is actually light texture. It's actually sold in a lot of baking stores. Just ask for sweetened coconut flakes. It's soft, so it actually sits upon in between the butter. All right, so that is this. I need to explain a few things before we go ahead. If you notice from this recipe that the butter content is more than the sugar content, all right? That's why you can't really compare it to my vanilla recipe, which has more sugar than more butter. This has more butter because I need it to have that, that pork tree appeal, all right? That would blend nicely with the coconut, number one. And number two, it's typically known that coconut milk is, a, it is sweeter than regular milk. So that is going into it, it's going to enhance the sweetness. And this is also a sweetened coconut flakes, not unsweetened, not desiccated, that is unsweetened. So when you have to factor all of this in, you know that you don't need to put too much 
original sugar so you don't have like an overwhelming slapping result so they will like be like a balance so let's just go right into it now so the steps are seen i already prepared the meringue that is the egg white i prepared the butter and the milk and the butter and the sugar so next up is i'm going to be closing this right now and the next thing i'll be going in the reason i'm reading that i want it to be fast and not miss out anything so the next thing you're going to be doing now is um you just add the egg yolks whilst the butter and sugar is beating so i'll do that now add the egg yolks in the mixture then you add the coconut milk the vanilla flavor and the coconut flavor so at this point i'm going to be adding this that is the egg yolks it's going in all at once then i'm going to be adding the coconut flavor and then i'll just simply take the coconut milk and just take out one over four cup i just did that i didn't want to do it ahead of time so mix it faster regardless so one over four cup and the reason why it's taking lesser quantity than the actual milk is because it's a bit heavy this kind of coconut milk is heavy most coconut milks are heavy so it's just like the highlight the main thing is the milk so that's what it looks like it's actually white so now i'm going to be adding the egg yolks all at once you see it's four all at once this is to kick start the creamy texture that it's going to have and then the meringue is actually going to give it the final effect that's why they're not added at the same time so the egg going in now let me turn it and then at this point then we mix on medium So that's to make sure that everything is getting well incorporated. All right. So after which I will then go ahead and start adding the dry ingredients. Now the ratio of the dry ingredients is three additions of flour and two additions of the milk. So I'll start with flour. I go flour, milk, flour, milk, flour, and then I end it up with the meringue as well as the um, shaved coconut. Coconut shaving. So we go. Now.
characteristic. That's just because I have added the egg white. Do you understand? Remember, I just added some part of the egg, the, the yolk. So you haven't gotten the full egg effect in the bag. So at this point now, let me just set this aside. Then we will then go ahead and fold in the white, which is actually called the meringue. Look at what it looks like before I start folding it in. Slightly thickened, I say, like a typical vanilla cake. But then, see, so this goes in in about two additions. It also increases the volume of the recipe invariably. And that's because this has actually increased in volume as well. So it would rub off on the recipe, know how. So just before the entire thing enters, just put the separate part so you don't end up over mixing. And if you notice, I'm actually just folding in carefully. Okay. Trying to work in one direction. Make sure I don't overwork the butter. So just shortly before I have all of the meringue in it, the egg white in meringue form, I will then add the coconut shavings. Now I don't need to coat this with flour like I earlier said because it's actually the lightweight variant. And trust me, if you're making this kind of cake as like a loaf cake that you want to sell off without having any frosting. Feel free to add up more coconut shavings on the surface to further enhance the look. You can even decide to add up the toasted one at that point. That way, the client gets to enjoy the toasted one as well as this softened one. But for today, I really don't think I'm going to be adding it to the top. Okay, but yeah. So, guys, this is what it looks like after mixing. See, it will look rough, and that's because of the presence of the coconut in it so i'll be pouring this into the pan now and taking it right into the oven baking it up and then bringing it back out when i'm done to show you what it looks like texture wise and result yeah. over the surface so if you decide to add up maybe I can just do that okay if you decide to add up any coconuts on the surface do that before you heat it gently do that after you must have heat it gently on the water table so that you don't get to have that drown inside again this okay so let me get the little some extra spice quite optional but looks a lot more appealing trust me if you're using this for like a loaf like i earlier said or cupcakes clean cupcakes that have no frosting so this is what the butter looks like right before going into the oven so i'll be back shortly to show you what the result is welcome back so this is the result of our coconut cake i've already taken it out of the pan can you see how it looks slightly golden yellow? Perfectly baked, no bone sides and all that. So let's cut this together. So as always, I'll just take it. Yeah. This cake looks and feels super fluffy. Super fluffy, right? See what it 
it looks like on the bottom side. Perfectly baked. carefully you see that it has no dense texture whatsoever this is 100 percent fluffy and same thing i've not seen many so that will be all for today i hope it was an interesting class i hope you found this exciting to learn i hope you're going to try it out and as always i hope you're going to keep subscribing keep liking keep commenting and keep staying close all right this network should continue to be built and let's just keep growing in hips and in that. So, see you next time, guys. I will make your favorite girl, your favorite baker girl, finish this next video. So, bye.